cek 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 okay sorry thank you ma'am Grace for okay thank you ma'am Grace for the the report at uh, the report the the um what's that my English is stuck uh the information uh the info I'm not the info another one I I forgot my English words okay okay we will go back here in the old time if the king has three sons and the youngest was the smartest and the most favorable uh, of the father and the father always you know loved the youngest more than all the elders or other uh, children and the youngest always show his intelligence the eldest will get jealous because most possible that the king will give the throne to the youngest and the youngest would be killed by his own older brothers. That's what really happened in the old time. Uh, and because I was watching this uh, uh, just short clip, not okay, and this is the old time. And the boy is only 10 years old, 10 years old. And uh, the father is more favorable, favorable of him uh, than uh, all, all his, uh, another two Guya, uh, two older brothers, because this youngest uh, was always smartest. And the father hired uh, the best, best teacher for this uh young boy uh 10 years old boy right uh and so the elders got jealous and you know what he sent the snake uh the venomous snake to kill the boy okay and the result you know the boy died uh so that's true, truly happened that in the old time, uh, especially if you are uh, in the high positions like the prince uh, and you are the youngest and you try to out or outsmart of your brothers and you got the favorable of the king, you will not live long. Okay? So now, the same things that was happened to our Joseph in the Bible, okay? Joseph was the youngest at his time, okay? Was the youngest at his time uh, before Benjamin was born. So he was the youngest. Uh, he was the most favorable kid, uh, the most uh, uh, favorable kid of the father. The father loved him. The father gave him more food. The father gave him more beautiful clothes. The father always gave him less work. And etc. And you know the results. Joseph was, uh, was almost killed by his brother. Okay? Almost. Almost killed by his brother. See? So now, uh, are we going to high our intelligence if uh, in the family and uh, your favorable kids? Yes, in the old time, and they, they have to hide the intelligence. But the difference was that Joseph, Joseph, had God. Why all the unbeliever they has none. Okay, that's the different things. Joseph 
is was the youngest. The same with this boy, also the youngest. Joseph was favorite son. This boy also favorite son. Always have best teacher, best food. Joseph, his brother is jealous with him and sought to kill him. And this boy, also his brother, got jealous with him and sought to kill him. But the only thing different was that Joseph had God, while this boy has none. The unbeliever has none, this boy. And later on, this boy died. He was killed by his brother. Now, we go back to Joseph. His brother uh, sold him to the Ishmaelites, and the Ishmaelites brought Joseph into Egypt and sold him to an Egyptian. So Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hand of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down hither. And the Lord was with Joseph. This is the different things which the believer has, uh, we believer have, and the unbeliever don't have. Okay? So, Joseph was protected by God. And the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph was not alone. Even his brother hated him, sought to kill him. Even his father so far to protect him, to know about his situation. But the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph because Joseph was with the Lord. Uh Joseph, he was just only 17 years old when he was sold into Egypt. In Egypt, in the land of full of idols, in the land full of uh, worshipping frogs, mosquitoes, flies, worshipping lions, eagles, the, the all kind of idols, the land that no even a shadow of a believer. Yet Joseph alone over there. But Joseph still faithful to his God and do not serve the idols. That's why the Lord was with Joseph and blessed him. Remember, Christian, wheresoever you go, sometime that you will be alone. Okay? Sometime you'll be alone. Sally, Joshua, sometime you'll be alone. You're 16. Joseph was 17. But remember, the Lord will be with you if you seek the Lord first. And this is a wonderful thing like this. He was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, Egyptians. Okay? So, he was a prosperous man. Okay? Okay. Prosperous. Unlike, rich, prosper, okay? And he was in the house of his uh, master, the Egyptians. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. So, his master saw that the Lord was with him. Joseph in that land of Egypt, he did not compromise uh, his God with the, the idols of Egypt. Whatsoever he do, he always mentions about the Lord, the Lord do it, the Lord do it. That's why Potiphar noticed that really it was the Jehovah, the Lord, the Jehovah, was with Joseph. And that was the Jehovah, the Lord, make all that Joseph did prosper. Okay? And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. 
and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put into his hand because of the testimony of Joseph and uh, uh, the faithfulness of Joseph unto God. So Potiphar saw his faithfulness and saw how the Lord worked through Joseph. That's why the Lord uh, Potiphar trust, trust Joseph everything that he had. Okay? Nowadays, a human, we have a tendency of looking for a person that, uh, you know, a helper or a person you can trust. The first conditions we always after maybe a religious person, but a person that fear God. Okay? Even they are unbeliever. Uh, be, I met some friend, they are Buddhism, okay? And uh, they, they knew that I am a Christian because I always mention about God, about Jesus, about uh, the good works, about helping this people and that people. They trust me because I am a religious person, okay? And also in America, uh, if you ask a lot of American, I do not know nowadays, but before, okay, before, if you ask American, what is your standard of choosing the president? Uh, they, I always uh, I heard that they said that I'm choosing the, uh, what's that? God fears man, God fears man, uh, the man that fears God. Okay, the man has the fear of God to be the president. Okay, so when you are faithful to the Lord, when you're talking, always talking about God, about the Lord, about Jesus, remember you are magnifying the name of the Lord. At the same time, the people will trust you. Because that is their tendency, even they are unbeliever. But the people will trust you more. Okay? So therefore, Christian, we should not fear to tell about Jesus to other people. Because sometimes, you know, you have heard that in Vietnam is was that restricted nations, blah 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 blah. And then you fearful to talk about Jesus. No, no problem. Do not talk about religions, but talk about your God. Talk about Jesus. How did Joseph survive in Egypt? He cannot stand up and speak to Fotifa immediately. Fotifa, you are worshipping idols. You are worship all your country are idol worshipper. You are worshipping the, the, the statues that have eyes, cannot see, have mouth, cannot speak. Okay. If Joseph did that, he would be, you know, uh, annihilated, being destroyed, being killed, or slain. But what Joseph did in his work, when he success, Potiphar asked, wow, you do good works. Joseph always say, oh, it was the Lord who helped me do that. Oh, it was the Lord who helped me do that. Oh, it was the Lord who helped me do that. See? The testimony of, of Joseph like this. And later on, his master saw it was really the Lord who was with him. See? Because every successful, uh, every credit, every glory, he gave all to the Lord. And because he's so kind of religious persons in the eyes of uh, Potiphar, so Fortifa trusts Joseph, and Fortifa give all that he had to Joseph, and these things will can happen again if we Christian uh, trust the Lord and give on the credit to Him. Okay, in the eyes of unbeliever, that's I'm, I'm talking about in the eyes of. Uh, unbeliever huh? 
because sometimes uh, in the church we are easy to say, oh, because it's of the Lord, because of the Lord who doing so, because of God who doing so, because of Jesus, love who doing so. But we are shy to tell that one in the eyes of unbeliever outside of the church, uh, on the street, in the park, someone that we help uh, on the park, we saw the beggar and we help, or we saw the, the old woman who crossed the road, we help, and, and they, they, you know, they give the credit to us and we, we shy to mention about Jesus. So, you know, let, let not be shy and let should not be shy. Because the more you tell about Jesus, the more you give credit to the Lord, the more the Lord will bless you and the more you will find grace in the eyes of the people, even unbeliever. And that was happened. And it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blesses Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The Lord blesses Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The Lord can bless unbeliever for the sakes of what? For the sakes of the believers. Okay. Uh, that was oh, uh, when Jesus tell about a story, whosoever give a cup of water unto the least of my disciples, okay, surely he will not lose his reward in heaven. Okay. The What's this? Cannot hear again. Ah, uh, okay. I do not know. Do you understand? Amen. I do. Who's that? Okay. The Lord can bless you. So, now, when we talk about uh, giving, it's very easy for us to uh, give to someone who can return to us something. Example, uh, if you work for a company, and uh, of course you give your labor, you give your strength, you give your uh, health, you give your mental, uh, you know, uh, intelligence. And what? The more you give, the more the company will give back to you, the more the company give you salaries. You work hard, you work good, you will have uh, bonus, you will have increasing salaries, you will have trips, you will have uh, what's that free trip to Australia, to Singapore, right? If you work for the company and you effort, extra effort, and the company give you back bonus, you will be happy and be, and the more you will do more, okay? It's very easy. Even unbeliever can do that. Help someone that able to return us to us, return the payment, return the money, or return something to us. It's easy for us to help that person. But if you're trying to help someone that will not return to you the bonus, or the increasing of salary, or any promise of freedom, it's really hard for you to work for. That was the case of Joseph. Now, who was Joseph? He was just a Hebrew. He was a slave in Egypt. And whatsoever he do, even he increase, even he in high positions, he has no salary. He received no mercy and when he was in prison, there's nowhere that record that Joseph has his own money, building his own house in Egypt, or get some money to give to uh, the, the, the jailer in the prison. No any record in the Bible. And I believe Joseph has no best salary or higher salary because he was just a slave. And Potipa is just, what's the word? 
abusing. Potiphar is just abusing Joseph. But how come Joseph is doing his best? Always trying his best to do it. And he did not receive as he should. Okay? Only in positions, but without salary, without what a vacation, or without a promise of Fotifa that Fotifa promised to Joseph, okay, may Joseph, if you do for me good in 10 years, you will be free. I will set you free. Or I will give you a wife. Uh, I will set you free, etc. No any promised from Fotifa. No any record of increasing salaries. No any promise of setting free. But yet, Joseph still diligently, faithfully, working, working, working for, the, for Fotifa. Working for the person that did not give him any promise, did not increase his salaries, did not increase his treatment. Yet, he's still faithful doing that. How come? How foolish? How come? Just because Joseph is trying to please the Lord and is waiting for the Lord's answer. As a slave, he always, you know, have a desire to be free. All the slaves, Joseph always have desire to be free. And I believe 17 years old, Joseph missed his father a lot. He missed his brother a lot. Right. Because later on, you see that when he misses see his brother, he forgives his brother, he, he, he kisses, he hugs, he, you know. He so misses his brother, he so misses his family. But yet, why Joseph did not ask for Tifa for a chance to be free? To go back to his own place. Okay? Why he did not ask for a chance to be free? To go back to his place. It was not, at least, it was not recorded in the Bible. But did he ask? Did any Potiphar promise to him? If even not. Joseph knows that he works and is waiting upon the answers of the Lord. He's waiting for the leading, the guidance of the Lord. Now, Christians, sometimes that we fall into the same situation like Joseph. Sometimes that you feel that your salary is not suitable with your working, your effort. Sometimes you feel that you are, you know, uh, you miss your family. You miss your loved one like Joseph. You want to depart. You want to give up. You want to, you know, ask a request. But Joseph faithfully served and he do it. He served the Lord. And the important that Joseph did, remember, is that his master, Fotipa, saw the Lord was helping Joseph. His master saw the Lord's hand, Jehovah's hand. It's not the laws of Egypt, okay? This is law Jehovah. His master saw the hand. And that's why, okay, here, this was the law. And that's law capital, that is Jehovah, not the law of Egypt. His master saw that. So when we work, even for unbeliever, make sure that your boss saw the Lord Jesus in your hand. Not in yourself, not taking credit for yourself, but for the Lord. They saw the Lord Jesus in you. That's the Lord of heaven is helping you. 
make sure your master saw that. Okay, your boss saw that. And the Lord was really with Joseph. And what happened? The Lord blessed unbelievers because of believers' sake. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. The blessings of the Lord expanded not all the small areas that Joseph managed, but even to all the house, in the house and in the field, in the children, in all the things, the servants, all the things that he had. See? The Lord can bless unbeliever for the believer's sake. And he left, and Fotipha left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. See? So Fotipha was an officer of Pharaoh, yet he knew not aught he had. Because he gave it all to Joseph, managed it, is how he trusts Joseph. It's very possibility that Joseph can cheat it and get some money. So later on, he can, you know, he can just ask or buy some servants and just escape from 45 and go back to Canaan, go back to his father. He can do it. Because he's manager of all and he can, you know, even 45 did not know. How much he had. And if Fotifa did not know, Joseph can cheat that, can get some of the money, can save some of the money. And one beautiful day, he can just escape and, you know, rent or buy the horse or buy the camel, buy some food, buy one to two servants and run out of Egypt and go back to the land. But yet, there was no record that Joseph escaped. He's faithfully, faithfully doing his work without notice, without salaries, without, you know, any favor. And Joseph this time, he was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master wives cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But Joseph refused and said unto his master wives, Behold, what is it? Be Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he has to my hand. And there is none greater in this house than I. Look at that. There is none greater in this house than I. See that? It's very tempting to Joseph to commit the sin with the wife of Potipha. It's very tempting to Joseph to escape from Egypt and go back to his father's house. It was very tempting to Joseph to kill for Tifar and get all of his things that he had and go with the wife of Potiphar and replace the Potiphar positions and have all the money and riches and even the wife. It was very tempting. But Neither he had kept back anything from me but thee, because thou his wife. How can I do this great wicked sins against God? See? Since when Joseph sins, he know that he will not sin against Fortifa, nor his wife, nor it was sin against God. So in Joseph's life, it's always about God. He work as if he worked for God. He give the glory, give the credit, he gives all to God. When it's temptation, 
He said, I will not sin against God. Wow. And we have, we ought to learn from Joseph. Always give the credit to God and always think about the Lord. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day, day by day. And when Potiphar went uh, left already to do somewhere, he, she will talk to Joseph night by night that he hearken not unto her to lie with her, not to be with her. When she went for uh, when when the wife of Potiphar in the house, Joseph will go out of the house. And when she's outside with Joseph, Joseph will get inside the house. She, he did not want to be with her. Get away from the temptation. You know, but Satan will not leave you alone. Satan will always try their best to put you down. And if you are an unbeliever, I'm sure you will die. If you are a believer, I'm sure you will fall into temptation. But if you are if you are a believer, I tell you, let trust the Lord. Let's trust the Lord. Even we look at the you know, look at the the sky, look at the future. We do not know what will be the future. But just trust the Lord. There are many things in my life now we are doing and I do not know what will be the result in the future. When I'm teaching the kids here, we have uh, some uh, kids here, we are adapting them, teaching them. Rigel, Sally, Joshua, Ladim, four of them. I do not know what will happen in the future. They may come back to their own house, like uh, another kids before, like Man, Sua, Fung, Van, Chanda. Or they, or like another kids even before, like in painting, they, they will go back, or they will continue, or they will become missionary. I do not know. You know, and it's very tiring. Uh, resources, uh, resources consuming. Uh, you know, it will consume your strength, your health, your finances, and all, all of those things. But remember, what I can do is that I trust the Lord. Because when trusting the Lord, I have strength. When I look at the Lord, I have strength to move on. But if you got sidetracked and you are not looking at the Lord, and you are looking at the children, you're looking at the people, you will be tired. You will be sidetracked. You will be disappointed. You will be, you know, uh, distressed. Uh, you will be stressful. You will be sorrowful. <laughs> you will be self pity. If Joseph is not looking on the Lord and still looking at his house, his father and brother in, in Canaan, I tell you, he possible he already ran away back to his place because he has all the chance to, to run away. And if Joseph is not looking unto the Lord and he's looking at his money, looking at his own labor, how he effort to do for for Fortifa, and then he think about himself himself. And he said that I should deserve to receive my labor. Uh, I should deserve my labor. I should be free. Then he should have the chance to be free already. Or he should have, uh, you know, get some money of Fatifa already. Remember the story of Laban and Jacob. Laban would cheat the Jacob and change his salary 10 times. Jacob was angry, was so disappointed. But the Lord, later on, the Lord intervenes by showing Jacob the dreams. 
and by that dreams uh, uh he turned uh, you know the, the 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 goat and the the, the sheep which is white sheep, a white goat, a brown goat becomes spotted goat, a spotted sheep. It was the Lord who intervened and get the money, return the salary for Jacob. But not on the time. In the case of Joseph, there was no intervention of the Lord to return the money for Joseph. Or even set Joseph free to send back to his father's house but it's worse Joseph was put in prison because he was doing good he was put into prison because he did good he did what was right you see that and and I believe all of you know the story later on sometime the Lord will not intervene and give a salary back and all the people, the Lord intervened and give salary back. Each one, God has different plans. Sometimes we work in the same company, same Christian company, and all the people have higher salary, we have lower salary, but yet we work at the same effort, the same time of working, the same load, but that person have higher salary, and we get lower salary or lower love gift. Sometimes it's happened even among the church, uh, in the church, in the church member, in church offices. Yeah, it's happened. But remember, the, the Lord, the pastor is not perfect, but the Lord is perfect. The Lord has his way to lift you up if you are heartedly work for the Lord. That's, you know, that's why I have encouraged myself. We invest not for the children. I invest for the Lord. We're working for the Lord. We try our best for the Lord. We teach us, you know, for the Lord. We dream for the Lord. We dream how all of this one become missionaries how that we can start more English club, how they could share more the, the, the Bible, how all these kids can speak English. We dream. It's all for the Lord. We invest money. Building houses, you know. Of course, when you have kids, you have to bring them outside to play, not on the time they will study. They need to go out. They need to relax. They need all the need of their lives, you know, sabon, cleanings, all these things. But we have to do it for the Lord, not for them. And the Lord will bless you. Just the Lord. Just the Lord. And Joseph trusts the Lord. And he was in prison. But that's not the end. That's not the end. Right? Temptation came. Joseph said, no, 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 no. He avoid temptation. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within. Okay? So this is your lessons. Joseph, learn from Joseph, huh? When someone is tempting you already in the house, and when you go into a house, do business, bring someone with you. Joseph has authority to bring someone with him, to accompany him, to get inside the house. Okay? When you know one only uh, 40 or far wives inside the house, bring someone. Do not go alone. Even you can run away, but she will harm you, okay? She caught him by his garment and saying, Oh, can lie with me. I miss you, handsome boy. And then he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Okay? And it came to pass when she saw that he left his garment in her hand and was fled forth. Gita. Ăn không được thì đập cho bể. 
that's in Vietnam saying means if you if I cannot eat it, I will destroy it. That's the psychology of all the people. This lady, long, long time, she cannot eat it. So she destroyed it. She destroyed Joseph. She called out the men of the house and spake unto them, saying, See, he that hath brought the deep root to mock us. See, for Tifa has brought a deep root unto us to mock us. Uh, he came in unto me and lied with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when I heard uh, that I lift up my voice and cried, and he left the garment me, uh, with me and fled and got him out. And look at this. He laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. What a cruel, what a dirty woman. If Joseph really, you know, tried to rape her, she should just throw this gammon away, the gammon of Joseph away. Now, she get that gammon Joseph laid by her, keep by her like this, until his Lord came home and show. Crazy, crazy, uh, evil woman. And she spake unto Potiphar according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought to us came unto me and mocked me. And it came to pass as I lift up my voice and cried, and he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass when his master heard these words of his wife, which she spake unto him, After this man did thy servant unto me, and his wrath were kindled. And Joseph master took him and put him in prison, a place where the king's prisoners was bound, and he was there in prison. No need explanation. Christian remember this. Sometimes unbeliever honors, and just in after five seconds, they disdain us. Just a day ago, Potiphar was trusting Joseph, lifting Joseph up. Oh, he is a good man. He is a man with, uh, with the Lord's hand upon him. Uh, all of my things I trust to him. And he, he boasts of uh, other people about Joseph. He boasts about his freedom. Uh, he boasts about of his luck. He found a good servant, faithful servant that no one can have. And just another day, he put Joseph into prison without any hope, without any listen to Joseph's explanation, without any trust to, to, to Joseph's words or after or heart. See that? Unbeliever can turn upside down and die outside up very fast. Not only unbeliever, actually humans. All of humans can turn very fast. But... The Lord was with Joseph. But the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord did not leave Joseph alone. The Lord was there. Alone in the prison, without hope, without family. Joseph could regret, oh, how I wish. Oh, how I wish if I was in prison like this, I could e escape from Fortifa and go back to my family, to my father and my brothers already. Why should I, why did not I escape from Fortifa? Why should I remain that now I in prison? Right? That's common sense being, if it was me, I should say so. I should really regret. Oh, Potifa, you did not trust me. Uh, I regret how come I just, just lay with your wives and kill you and get all of your money. You should regret. Or at least it's better than me. He can regret like, oh, how come I have a chance to go back to my brother, brothers with my fathers? Why should I stay? Why should I remain? And now I'm in prison for no thing, for no reason. No day, no hope to go out. 
right? As common sense. But there was no record that Joseph did so. Joseph in prison, he was not alone. The Lord was with Joseph. Christians, when you are in the bottom of life, there's two reactions. The first reaction was you stay there and regret because of your wrong decision. Oh, I regret I should not go to Vietnam. I regret I should not choose this pastor to help with. I regret I should not uh, uh, like this and that. I regret I should not do like this and this. I regret I should go early and ready. Right? That's the first thing you can do. Just stay there in the bottom and regret. Second, the second option, just be faithful and trust the Lord. Keep on praying, praying to the Lord. Two years in prison. Joseph, what he did? Pray, pray, sing, pray, sing. <laughs> what did? No work. You may be a little work cleaning this and that, but not much worry, not much mental work. Like before in Pharaoh, uh, in, in Potifa place. Right? In prison, let's work. Pray, sing, pray, sing, and trusting the Lord. When you are in deepest positions or deepest valley of life, just trust the Lord and be with the Lord as the Lord be with you. He will show mercies unto you and He will deliver you. He will lift you up someday. Just trust the Lord. The devotion this morning when I read with the boys uh, was that in Proverbs chapter 14, I, I forgot the verse. The fear of the Lord is life. And the fear of the Lord is life. And his children will find a shade under him. Okay, so that's what is Proverbs. This was devotion this morning. Wait, wait. I, I'll just end it here in this verse. It's very nice. And I think I sent it into the Bethany group uh, here. Yeah. Into Bethany. Uh, uh, Bethany, oh, I sent to Mama. No, I forgot. Where is it? Uh, how, how to use it? Hey, here. Proverbs 20, uh, 14, verse 26. The fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. When you are in deepest part of life, when you're in the prisons, where you're in valley of the shadow of death, remember, we have a strong confidence that is the fear of the Lord. His children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. This, I believe, is the strength of Joseph when he was in prison. Let us have this strength in our lives to face forward. Let's pray. Gracious, mighty Father, thank you, dear Lord, for this evening. For the life of Joseph, for the life that totally trust in you. And Lord, he was up, he was down, without any reasons. He has chance to come back to his brothers, to fathers. He has chance of, you know, opportunities to get all the riches of Fotifa, even the wife of Fotifa. But yet, he feared the Lord. He is not there to sin against God. Lord, he was put in the prison because of doing what is right. But he was not alone because you was with him and you had a better plan for him and for all the Israelites. Lord, and I believe in this Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26 and 27, is also be our strength, dear Lord. Help us fear you. 
help us to love you, fear you that we will not sin, love you that we will have comfort, trust you that we will have hope. Let us have refuge under your wing. Lord, you said that when we fear the Lord, that is the presence of life. Help us to depart from the snare of death in this life. Thank you, Father, for this night again, for your precious promises and for your word. May you bless each one of us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Paul, and may God bless you, Paul, Mom Grace, Teacher Lynn, and Sally. Okay. Good night, Paul. Oh, Sam is off.